Hello, Harvard High School families. This is Carl Hobbs, principal at Harvard High School. I sure hope you're having a wonderful summer. I wanted to take a few moments to explain to you our transition to the FlexMod schedule for this year. Now, those of you that were here last year, you already were operating in a modified FlexMod schedule. The big difference this year is that all classes will be semester long. We won't have quarters or term classes. So the FlexMod is a schedule that really talks about and focuses on personalized learning. So the question is, why would we change from a block schedule to a flex mod schedule? One of the things we know is that 21st century learning demands and requires of our students to be collaborative, communicate very well, be creative, and have critical thinking skills, and also be accountable and take responsibility. One of the things about the flex mod is it really gives a lot of ownership to student learning within that model. We understand that time should serve students. Students shouldn't serve time. And one of the things we like about the FlexMod, it actually gives us the opportunity to build in intervention and enrichment time within the schedule, which we, we couldn't do before in a traditional block schedule. And to provide this kind of personalized learning, we need a system that's agile, adaptable, and flexible. And that's why we're moving to the FlexMod. So FlexMod basically is talking about Learning is best when time is varied in duration, it's personalized and connected to the needs of the students. And this is a very innovative program and the schools that we visited that actually do these types of programs, they saw a big transformation in their student body because the ownership and the accountability was given back to the students. Teachers also had the flexibility and the creativity to design their classes the way they thought were best for students. So there's a lot of ownership both on the teacher side and the student side. And this is one of the reasons why we research this type of scheduling and we want to move to it as our, as ourselves. So we're used to the block schedule. Every class was 82 minutes and we met every other day. The flex mod is designed around 20 minute mods of time. So each mod is 20 minutes. And if you're familiar with the old Tetris game, it's very similar to that game. You take those 20 minute mods and you can piece them together to create a course. And then that course is built together to create a schedule. So the Tetris pieces are varying sizes, but they all fit together to create a schedule. And what we know is that not every class needs to be the same amount of time every day. Also, creating opportunity within the schedule for students gives them flexibility to do things as far as getting help, collaborating with students, having time to do homework, meeting with teachers, and for upperclassmen, leaving and doing internships, apprenticeships, work programs, taking classes at the community college and so forth. But within a flex mod, the ability to do those kinds of things is the reason why we're really moving to this, is we want to give students more opportunity and flexibility to get the support that they need and give them opportunities to take advantage of the things they want to take advantage of. And what we're going to do is share with you some examples of actual student schedules to give you an idea of how this all works together. Again, we know this is very different. It's very innovative. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, being easy would be staying the same. And we looked at the research, and we visited the schools, and we saw all the gains that those students had and the accountability and responsibility. And we believe that our students can do the same thing. And so that's why we're transitioning. But let me share with you some examples of schedules so you can kind of get an idea of how this works together. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at a freshman example of a schedule here. What you're going to notice is the top are the mods. And again, mods are just 20 minute blocks of time that are stringed together to create a class. The whole idea behind a flex mod schedule is that time should serve students. Students shouldn't serve time. Not all classes need to be 80 minutes long. And we also notice too, that in a, in a traditional block schedule where they meet every other day, in a flex mod, we have a little bit more room and flexibility to move our classes throughout the week as we need. So when we look at a flex mod schedule, we're looking at a schedule for a student a week at a time as opposed to a day. So for example, if you look at a Monday schedule here for this student, you notice that on Monday, they have algebra, intro to business, drafting, PE, lunch, open, science, and sign language. You'll notice that the duration of the classes are different. And if you look at the entire week, you'll notice that this person will have algebra on Monday, Wednesday, 
Thursday, and Friday. They don't have it every day. They don't have it every other day. You'll also notice, too, on the schedule that PE, they'll have three times within the week. But the idea behind the scheduling in the Flex Mod is that we have the ability to schedule different durations throughout the week. So this student's PE class will be 80 minutes on Monday, 60 minutes on Tuesday, no PE on Wednesday, 60 minutes on Thursday, no PE on Friday. But we still have the hours that we want students to, to participate in these different classes. We just have the flexibility of changing the duration of the class. Also, you'll notice too, like for example, this English class. It's a long class and at the end of that class, the teachers have the flexibility, which is called a flex class, to where let's say they're, they're working on a project and let's say my partner really understands or my classmates really get it and they're, they're good to go. I'm still struggling a little bit and so are a few of my classmates. What could happen is a teacher can say, okay, those of you that kind of got what you need to go, you can go ahead and move on and leave. I'm going to stay with this small group and kind of help you guys out if you need a little bit of help. So teachers have the flexibility of doing that, and we're giving students the responsibility and accountability of being responsible on their own when they're released from a class. You'll notice in this schedule there are no bells because classes will overlap each other. So students will have to look at their schedule on Monday and, and realize, okay, algebra is going to be done after an hour, and then I go to intro to business. So the last four minutes of a class is a passing period. And again, this is relying on students being accountable and responsible for this kinds of freedom. You'll notice that they'll have lunch time and open time. Open time is really for them to do a number of things. They can go study if they want in the library or in our student area outside the North Gym. They can collaborate on a project with students. They can seek teachers for help in the workrooms. They can go to the Hornet Room for enrichment or intervention. One of the nice things about the FlexMod schedule is we could actually create built-in intervention time for students that are struggling in the schedule, as opposed to trying to do it after school or before school. So this is uh, very similar to what you probably find in the, in the real world as far as a work schedule, university schedule, uh, trade school. It's giving students flexibility and responsibility to manage their own learning. So this is an example of a freshman class schedule, and this is what their week would look like. And again, their Monday will be the same the entire semester, their Tuesday will be the same the entire semester, and so on. And not every class will meet every single day. In this case, you'll see English is three times a week. However, the duration is different in each day and length. And that's to accommodate what the teachers are trying to do uh, in their classroom. Here's an example of a sophomore schedule. And you'll notice the student schedule is very different. But you'll also notice the same thing. Their Monday schedule will always be the same throughout the entire semester. Tuesday will not change the entire semester and so forth. This person, as you can tell, is really into, into music and band. And on their schedule, they're, they're set up a little bit differently than the example you saw on the freshman schedule. However, the same model follows. The duration of classes are gonna be different. The students will have opportunities to have open time, obviously their lunch time. And during the open time, here's another example of what this student could possibly do. Looking at their schedule, during their open time, this student could actually go into the band room and work and practice with the teacher and set up times for them to go ahead and meet. That's the other thing about the open part of the schedule. Students, especially who are passionate about a certain kind of uh, area, for example, let's say I'm really passionate about drafting, I'm really passionate about metals or wood shop, um, really passionate about science. This is an opportunity based on the teacher's schedules for a student to go ahead and get extra help or do some more of the things that they love. Matter of fact, if a student missed a class because they were out for a day because they were sick or something, they could actually, during their open time, if there's another class that's available during that time, they can go sit in at that class. This is a very innovative way of thinking about education and it's very different. We understand that. This is one of the reasons why we're moving to it. We're trying to create more opportunities for students to get the information that they need and giving them a lot of accountability and responsibility again to take ownership over their learning. At the end of these three days, you'll notice the student has 20 minutes uh, off or open. Again, they can study, they can work with a partner or do collaboration with students. They can go to the library, they can go to the cafe, they can go to the, the Hornet room for extra help. They can seek teachers out in their workroom that are available. Again, this is a very flexible, open 
uh, schedule. And again, it gives students ownership over their own learning. Here's another example, and now we're looking at a junior example of a schedule. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. You'll notice, again, that students' schedules, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so forth, those days will not change throughout the semester. However, throughout the week, your dates are going to be different. The nice thing about the schedule, you'll also notice that this student here, for example, on Wednesday, we have lunch in here right now, and that's 60 minutes. Part of that will be lunch, but the other part again will be the ownership of the student. They can collaborate with students on a project. They can go to the Hornet room for extra help. They can do homework. They can meet with teachers. Again, this is about taking ownership over the learning. It's not cookie cutter and everything is the same. It's a personalized scheduling flex mod program so that students can take ownership over their learning. And again, here's the other thing you're gonna notice. We look at the schedule at a week at a time, not day by day. And here's what I mean. You'll notice each day this student has six classes. However, because of the flex mod and the way it's arranged and the duration of classes, the student is actually taking eight full classes during the semester. But the way we flex them out in a given day, they're taking six classes at a time, a little bit more manageable and a little bit more flexible. Some classes are a little bit longer in the day and some are a little bit shorter. Teachers can decide how they want to use those times throughout the day. So here's another example of a junior schedule. Here's an example of a senior schedule. Now, as we're developing the schedule, again, this is the first time we've ever done this. We're learning that we have some areas that we still need to work out. For example, this student on Wednesday has McHenry County College early childhood class, and our forensics class starts at 920. So this is something we're working out with MCC to figure out how we can solve this, this situation. And as we're building this, we're finding there's a number of things that we're gonna have to try to fix and work out, and that's okay, because we believe that what we're doing here is gonna benefit students in the long run. One of the things too about upperclassmen is that they will have, in some cases, a lot of time available in the day that's open. We have juniors that have 28 credits already, so their senior year, they'll have a very light schedule. And why is that important? In some cases, students may be done at noon on a Monday or Wednesday, Thursday kind of thing. If they're in good standing, they're not failing any classes and on track to graduate, they can leave the school with parent permission, being on track and not failing any classes. The goal behind that is we want students to take advantage of opportunities for work, internships and apprenticeships. And with a flex mod schedule, if a student has the credits necessary and they are where they need to be, the flex mod will actually allow them to go ahead and leave school and pursue those kinds of things. Traditional schedules, we can never do that. Now, during lunch, we will not have an open lunch campus. That's not what we're gonna be doing. But beyond lunch, if a student has an hour or more open, and again, are in good standing, not failing any classes and have parent permission, they could actually leave and come back to school. Very innovative thinking and very different than what we've we've seen. The school that we visited in North Dakota, as an example of this program, they had students that came and went all day long. And there's a, a scanner program for their ID that they're able to track their attendance. Students took advantage of this opportunity and didn't abuse it because if they did, they would lose it. And so students became more accountable and responsible for their own schedule because they liked the flexibility and they liked the accountability. We wanna teach students to be accountable and responsible. We wanna give them the opportunity then to demonstrate it. And that's what the flex mod can do for us. Also, you notice at the end of the schedule, there's two mods that are open. In some cases, some students may actually have classes during this time. In North Dakota, we talked to a student who was a, a very advanced student and he actually packed a schedule. And on some days, he didn't even have a scheduled lunch. He just worked out between two classes with the teachers when he can grab something to eat real quick. But he wanted to have a, a packed schedule because that was what his academic goal and plan was, is to try to achieve so many classes and certain types of classes. The flex mod allowed that. And that's one, again, one of the things we like about the flex mod is that we understand that time should serve students. Students shouldn't be serving time. 
And that's one of the goals behind the Flex Mod. Again, things we still have to work out and figure out, but I hope you're starting to see the pattern here that this is more about personalized scheduling and learning for students with the Flex Mod. It's not a cookie cutter as some of the things that we've been used to or traditional schedules are like. So this is very innovative thinking. And here's an example of a senior schedule. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video on FlexMod scheduling. We know this is a huge transition, but we think it's very worthwhile. Now, students who requested classes, we're still gonna try to honor them like we have always. The difference is how they're gonna be framed within the schedule. So the difference is gonna be how time is used. And again, time should serve students. We are continuing to work on the schedules as we speak. As you can imagine, it's very complex. So we're working as much as we can to try to get our students' schedules finalized. It's gonna go all the way up to the beginning of school. But just so you know, we are working on them and we're trying to finalize them to get them as accurate as possible. As we go through this, we know that we're gonna to have to adjust. We're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna learn things that we didn't even know existed. And we're gonna make sure that we can fix them. We appreciate your patience and understanding as we make this transition. Again, we're doing this because we feel very strongly that this is going to benefit our students. Thank you so much, and we're going to continue to talk more about this as we get closer. And as you can imagine, in the first beginning days of school, we're going to spend a lot of time working with our students on how this schedule works. There's also an app called Timetable that actually will take this schedule and put it into their phones for them, and they can follow it on a daily, on a daily basis. Again, thank you so much for watching. We're very excited about this. Please enjoy the rest of your summer, and we'll be talking soon. Take care.